What's up guys? Uh, today we're gonna talk about pre-workout nutrition. Um, a lot of good feedback from the last video I made. So I figured I'd kind of go into details of the nitty gritty of pre-workout nutrition. Now I just wanna be super crystal clear. This pre-workout nutrition information is more or less regarding strength training, weight training. It's not contact sports or marathon running or anything of that. This is strength training, okay? First thing to consider is timing, all right? Now meal timing, I generally recommend 60 to 120 minutes. So that's an hour to two hours prior weight training, you'd have a solid meal, okay? Now obviously individuality variances come into that or some people might digest food slower than others. So obviously you have to play around with meal timing to see what's best fit for you. Some people like to feel full when they go into weight training and some people like to feel their stomach emptied and they're okay with that. All right, personally, I like 90 minutes. That's like my perfect go-to. Sometimes I have to do 60, but I don't wanna burp up food and, and feel that way, especially in the off season. You'll know that if you're eating consistently a large amount of food, that you're, the time between meals, uh, I mean, the time between you eat and you train tends to be a little greater because generally gastric emptying is a little, a little slower because you're bombarding the body with a little enough amount of food. Contest prep ends up being a little different, obviously. You could probably train 20 minutes after, and probably not have an issue, but still I recommend 60 to 120 minutes. Now, if you're training less than 60 minutes, um, the meal structure generally needs to change, okay? So if less 60 minutes, and like you, you, know, you have to be at the gym at 5 a.m., you get up at four, you don't wanna train fasted, so what do I do? In this situation, the meal structure needs to change as in you end up turning your protein sources that are, might be eggs or chicken into something like whey protein, whey protein ice, uh, isolate, hydroslate, something that digests relatively fast and it's gonna leave the stomach quickly. And then obviously for carb sources, instead of having like say, breads or potatoes or oatmeal, you might follow the lines of cream of wheat, cream of rice or rice product of some nature and something like that and keep that meal very low, low on the low fat side. And that way you can eat something, get something in your system feel a little full, you might have less chance of crashing your blood sugar during that workout if you have something pre-workout less than 60 minutes. So obviously less 60 minutes, you're trying to increase gastric emptying. So again, whey protein, rice products, cream of rice, low fat side, and that would be probably your go-to. So to give you a dead example of that, like a scoop and half of whey isolate, maybe 45 grams of carbs of cream of rice, maybe a teaspoon of fruit preserves for flavor, or maybe a half a banana and maybe a teaspoon of peanut butter. That way you have something to slow down that gastric emptying. Because to some degree, if you have something that's too fast, you might spike insulin and crash out in the workout. But again, that's individuality. For me, I would totally crash out. I always have to have some fat in my pre-workout nutrition no matter what time. So that's timing. So really guys, just try to find a time and then play by ear. And then over time, figure out what's best for you. And obviously if you're training legs, you might want to do 120 minutes or longer because you don't want to throw up in the leg press. Um, possible problems, uh, things to consider when you're putting together your uh, pre-workout meal is fiber content. So obviously the more fiber you have, you might be more distended, more bloated. Fiber draws water into the intestinal tract so it can make you feel distended and fuller for longer. And obviously it also delays gastric emptying as well. So you don't, may not want to consume 15 to 20 grams of fiber in a meal prior, uh, prior training. Although some people do not have a problem, but that's something to consider with your meal. It doesn't have to be zero fiber. It's just something you want to consider when you're looking at your meal. If you have a problem, is the fiber too high? Fat, obviously fat delays gastric emptying. So if you consume high fat meal prior to training, that's a sure bet that you're going to slow everything way down and you might be burping up food, and stuff like that. That's why a lot of you guys, you know, let's say if you go to a buffet and you end up pigging out and it ends up being like an omelet, bacon, sausage, and you're burping up the food like seven hours later because the food's just sitting there. Um, so I usually recommend fat grams between five and 15. Now that's total fat grams, not just added. That includes the meat, that includes the added fat, if there is any, five to 15. And obviously again, individual variants. Vegetables, to conclude them or not include them? That depends. Um, I generally can have a little wilted spinach in my eggs in the morning, so that ends up being some vegetable that's in my pre-workout meal. Is it a necessity? Certainly not. Um, most people don't include them. 
And obviously, if you're looking for, you know, less volume in your stomach, you probably want to omit the vegetables and probably include a larger quantity of vegetables later at night for the last meal of the day. And, you know, vegetables and fiber go good, to, go, kind of go hand in hand. The fiber I was more referring to would be like potatoes, oat, uh, oatmeal, oat bran, and such. And, of course, volume. So the volume of food can be uh, issues. You, you have two train of thoughts. When you have pre-workout nutrition, you have people say, oh, the meal should be generally kind of light. Um, it light because obviously all the meals you ate yesterday and earlier in the day are really what's going to fuel you. But you want to have something in your stomach to train. So therefore, food should be, the meal should be on the lighter side. And then the opposite goes, people go, oh, the biggest meal of the day should be pre-workout nutrition and post-workout nutrition because you're centering your energy around training. Who's right? Who knows? You really got to find out what works, works for you. Personally, I've always done uh, the same quantity of meal, the same amount of meals, meal volume in my regular meals and my pre-workout meal. The post-workout meal end up being a little bit more. Uh, currently, I do do more carbs um, for my pre-workout meal just because it is meal one and meal one is bigger. Just by coincidence, it's not pre-praying that way. Um, so my meal for meal one is 200 grams of carbs, while all the other meals about 100, besides post-workout. So volume is something to consider. So, you know, you could be a slightly above what you normally have for a meal or slightly under, but again, that depends on you. So just don't think there's any like set way that you have to build your perfect pre-workout meal. It's really an individual thing. And when I get into structuring it, I'll explain that. Um, dairy, I don't think people should include dairy in a pre-workout meal. Some people say it's, it's fine, they do like a little bit of whey protein or say Greek yogurt, and then they have their carb source on the side because it's kind of light, digests relatively quickly. But most people are lactose intolerant uh, to more of a dose dependent effect where they might tolerate eight ounces of Greek yogurt, but they go out and they have ice cream, glass of milk, and then they have issues. So I personally don't think that dairy should be a pre-workout, uh, part of your pre-workout. I think more or less that should be other parts of the day, maybe maybe the end of the day, because there's a little casing in there. But that's something to consider as well if you want to have dairy in your pre-workout nutrition shake or not. Um, lactose, you know, the milk sugar is not really the greatest thing for energy. Um, tips. So this is, this is how we kind of kind of put the meals together, all right? So when you're doing your pre-workout nutrition meal, it should be really similar to the macros in your other diet, all right? So say if you're doing, you know, a 50, say if you're doing a 40, 40, 20, and you're doing like 45 grams of carbs, 40 grams of protein, 15 grams of fat, for example, um, you might want to start there and then maybe alter those macros in that one meal. So you're not generally changing the calories the entire day, you're just kind of flip-flopping macros, all right? So for example here, 45 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs, 15 grams of fat, I dropped the fat 10 grams, I added more carbs to this meal, kept the protein the same. And then that way you could not, you're not changing too many variables at once. You're not gonna, um, if there's too many things changing, it's hard to keep track of what's working. So if you change one thing, and say you go from here to here, and you run it for four days, you're like, oh, it's pretty good, but you know, I get a little hungry in the middle of the workout or I feel like I lose my pump, then you can easily just add another 15 grams of carbs in additional to this meal and see how it plays and then leave the rest of the meals the same. Don't make up for adding it, just add it to your total calories in the day and add it to your pre-workout meal to see how it works and then build from there. If you find that dropping your fat down made you crash, you didn't get a little low blood sugar, obviously, maybe add some more fat to that meal or change this back. So some fat I believe should be in the pre-workout meal. Some people disagree, but again, it's an individual thing. Some people are very kind of up and down with you know, hypoglycemia um, or eating a bunch of carbs and training really hard to get a crash. So um, having some fat in there can help delay that. Um, I heard some pros say that some of their fats up to 20, 30 grams of the pre-workout meal and carbs will lower because they feel better. You know, Sometimes when you're consuming too many carbs, you get a quick energy boost and you feel good and full, and then as insulin starts to dip in the blood and blood sugar starts to go down, you start to feel flat. So this is an example of kind of like where you should start from. Start from the macros in your current diet, figure out what meal you want, 
lower the fiber intake, make sure the fat is reasonable, omit vegetables, obviously takes care of the volume if your meals are the same in the day, omit dairy, and then build from here, okay? Um, now, making up the protein, the carbs, and the fat, what should you use? So what should it include? Protein, now you have whey protein, which digests really quickly, you have egg whites that digest really quickly, but they're high in sulfur. They're sulfur containing, so they can cause gas in some. Especially people who are eating, you know, four or 500 grams of egg whites to meet their 45 to 55 grams of protein, they might feel gassy. I don't personally, but some people do. So your content of protein can be anywhere from whey to egg whites to chicken. I personally do not recommend red meat, although some people do it. I tend to always burp up red meat when I'm training. It doesn't digest well. And I know a lot of my clients have a lot of issues digesting red meat. So that's not something you might want to include in a pre-workout meal. Um, but whey or chicken or egg whites, I think is suitable. You can obviously play around with the grams of protein in that meal and make up and try it out to see what best works for you. Uh, fats, what should fats be? Should they be oil, nuts, avocado? Now, avocado is kind of FODMAP dependent, meaning it can cause gastric distress in the larger amounts. So that's something to consider in some, especially if you're using the, uh, the holy guacamole packets that also has garlic and onion in it, and that can cause gas and bloating, and you don't want to be feeling that way when you're training, especially when you're cranking down a belt doing heavier lifts. So I personally think oils are a better way to go. Olive oil, mac oil, coconut oil. Um, nuts you can do, but again, I, you know, you're adding some more fiber, and some people do have a problem with the nuts. So I think oil is the best personally, but you still can't really go wrong with nuts or nut butters, and those are fine. I just wouldn't use avocado for a pre-workout meal, as an added fat, that is. Carbs, you can range from carbs from potatoes to oats, but the bottom line is potatoes have a lot of content of water, and they have fiber, okay? So potatoes, as a lot of people know, have a high sachet rating. They keep you full for longer. So it's generally not something that's recommended pre-training. And I'm referring to boiled potatoes, microwave potatoes, baked potatoes and such. I'm not talking about french fries. Um, and oatmeal obviously digests very slow, very low glycemic on the, on the index chart, and has high amount of fiber. So that's something that may not want to include if you're trying to accelerate gastric emptying. I think rice products are the way to go. Rice cakes, jazz and white rice, cream of rice, rice and grinds, even using things like cream of wheat is fine. I know a lot of people are afraid of wheat because of gluten, but most people do not have a gluten allergy. They're more so intolerant to the wheat proteins in certain types of breads that have different types of proteins, like wheat durum that's found in wheat pasta. So try that out. So again, a quick review. Try your protein, um, either vary it from whey to chicken or eggs, uh, egg whites. Um, I would recommend doing oils instead of nuts, but nuts are fine. Omit uh, the avocado in that pre-workout meal. I would not use potatoes or oats. I would more lean in the direction of rice products, rice bread, white rice, cream of rice, and um, possible adding fruit. Um, you know, fruit has fructose in it and it can be used relatively as energy. It, fructose does not spike insulin the same way as um, regular sugar. So I think it's great to add to pre-workout meals. Um, you have antioxidants in there as well, but just a little bit of fruit, maybe 15 to 20 grams worth. But again, that's not something that you have to do. It's not something that's mandatory. It's not something that's going to make or break your pre-workout nutrition. It's just something I personally do. I've always have, you know, it's fun to have, if you have a cream of rice, because it's generally bland, it's nice to kind of like slice up a little banana with a couple of strawberries and kind of mix it in. At least you have some sort of balanced nutrition in that meal and get the micronutrients in there, okay? Now, troubleshooting. Things can change drastically when it comes to off-season and contest. So some of the information here kind of goes out the window. Uh, for example, in the off-season, as we kind of describe this as being in the off-season, moving into contest prep, you know, having fiber in the meal might not be such a bad idea because you're hungry, you're real hungry. So having a little bit of oatmeal, considering the whole overall food is down low, the chances of you having gastric issues becomes less and less and bloating. So having a little oatmeal as a pre-workout nutrition ends up being not the biggest deal because carbs are low at that point. Um, and obviously in contest prep, a lot of people center majority of their carbohydrates all around pre-training, post-training, 
for that same reason because all the energy is going to be used more so around that time um, instead of evenly spread through the day. So that's one train of thought that many people do use, um, but it's not necessarily that you have to use. Um, eating too fast. So if you're if you're doing everything right and you're oh man I'm still stomach's still upset. You might want to check to see if you're eating too fast. Eating too fast and not chewing your food and just guzzling it down as light and can, can, can cause you issues. It can delay gastric emptying. It can upset your stomach. The young guys don't really know what I'm talking about because when you're young, you can legitimately eat anything and nothing goes wrong. But as you get older, your, your intestinal tract and digestive system does not work the same. So watch, make sure you're not eating too fast. And also condiments and spices, highly overlooked. Hot sauce, mustards, ketchups, um, spices that contain garlic and onion, those can all be problematic. And I know a lot of people will come back with, well, I use them all year round. I don't know why it's a problem. The problem is sometimes being dose dependent is a factor, how much you use, repetitively use over time, and it become accumulative. 13 days in a row of using hot sauce every day, all of a sudden you start to have reflux symptoms. So it's just because you've been using all the time without a problem, doesn't mean it can't become a problem. And the other thing is when you're in contest prep, seem like spices and condiments become more of a problem because there's more in contact that the spices have with your intestinal tract because the overall volume of food is much less. So that's something to consider. You might want to reduce the amount that you're using that meal and omit them or change something else to say fresh, fresh, fresh cilantro, fresh basil, um, maybe just using salt and pepper, something like that, or even cumin, something else that doesn't have the dried garlic and onion or anything that's really spicy. Um, too much fluid. So if you're pounding too much fluid with a meal, you can kind of like dilute the stomach acid um, and delay gastric emptying. Your stomach might feel fuller for longer. So it's best to kind of like may possibly limit the amount of fluid you have with that meal and drink a little more fluid way before the meal or 30 to 45 minutes after is probably recommended. And that's of course if there's an issue. If you're not having an issue, don't change it. And in closing, just know that there is no cut and dry, perfect pre-workout training meal that's gonna work for everybody. You have to take this information and you have to tailor it to you and your body's response. I know people who used to be able to eat a pepperoni pizza and then they'd go train legs and they have no problem. Then I also know people that eat white rice and chicken and they go to the gym and they train legs and they throw up. And they end up having to use whey protein cream of rice and coconut oil. Everybody's a little different, so you gotta have to tailor it to what it is for you. Oh, also, one thing I didn't talk about. Make sure you add some salt to the pre-workout meal. I think that's highly beneficial for pumps, drawing water into the blood, and obviously staying hydrated. Um, your ability to stay hydrated is really electrolyte content. So like, you know, if you have that coming in, your body's more likely to hold on to the fluid instead of get rid of it. So that's something you wanna add in there. All right, guys, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know and comment below.